Hey everyone, just wanted to welcome to the Cybersecurity Defense in Depth. Uh, we we're just a little bit late getting started, just had to get a few things set up. I want to thank everyone that's coming out here. I'm going to bring our co host here on, James. Uh, hey, James, how's it going? Excellent, Brandon. How are you doing tonight? Not bad, not bad. Uh, how's things going in the cybersecurity industry? You know, it's crazy world right now with all the cyber attacks, hacks, uh, brute force invasions. Uh, uh, it's absolutely endless what's going on in the news. So I'm hoping that uh, tonight's events are going to be discussing and covering some real time topics to bring in a stronger awareness to the industry. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you're seeing right now, there's just so much going on. Every time I'm looking at the news, someone's getting compromised, someone's getting hacked, right? And just, you know, endless attacks, right? Just nothing but, you know, compromises. So I think there's a lot, especially with the pandemic, a lot of stuff's going on right now. I totally agree. I think really now that quantum computers are starting to surface around the globe, it's only a matter of time before it's going to get a whole lot worse. Now it's time to come together and start fixing the problem, not just adding to it. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why it's great that we have this, you know, a lot of great speakers and, and presenters, you know, coming through the cybersecurity defense. Today, we have two great speakers today. That's going to be awesome. I actually, I'm going to get ready to, to bring them on. Uh, just a few housekeeping uh, things that I'm going to go through as well. So are you ready to get started, James? I am looking forward to it. Awesome. So guys, just want to give you a little heads up of today's presentation, a uh, little housekeeping stuff we're going to have here. Actually, hold on a second here. So today we're going to have two presentations. Uh, this meetup is, is going to be live streamed and recorded. So you guys, if you guys miss it or have to go, you're going to actually be able to see it. We're going to have Q and A's after each pre uh, presentation. So you're going to have about 15 minutes to ask the, the keynote speaker, any questions that you might have about their topic or what they they're sharing, uh, about, you know, the information, which is going to be really in depth, a lot of great information I'm going to get today. Uh, so, uh, sit back, grab a coffee, grab a tea, get ready. Uh, let me know uh, if you guys have any questions in the chat. I'm going to be monitoring the chat so you guys can ask us live questions. Uh, we'll be monitoring it through the whole stream. Uh, the stream is two hours. So just, again, sit back, grab some coffee, grab some tea. It's going to be a great, great evening. So our first speaker here is Casey Fleming, uh, serves as chairman and chief executive officer at Black Ops Partners Corporation, uh, the global leader in delivery strategic risk strategy and real-time intelligence to today's forward-thinking business, government, and academic leaders. Mr. Fleming is a widely recognized top expert through uh, thought leader and visionary on issues related to strategic risk and strategy. He is recognized worldwide keynote speaker and, and advisor for risk, strategy, uh, economic espionage, IP theft, cybersecurity, critical adversary intelligence, uh, great power uh, competition, unrestricted hybrid warfare, and the gray zone. He focuses on leveraging risk and strategy into competitive advantages. Mr. F uh, Fleming co-developed the in Invect Generation 4, the adapted risk and strategy modeling platform for identifying and mitigating unseen risk within companies and supplying uh, supply chains while identifying opportunities to complete more effectively. So he's going to have a very in-depth uh, conversation presentation today. So this is going to be really interesting. And then we have Jesse Van Grieven, uh, his PhD, uh, PhD engineer, is an accomplished uh, entrepreneur, author, investor, and professor from the University of Waterloo, uh, Canadian's leading university for engineering and computer science. Jesse has co-authored four books and is the editor-in-chief of the Environmental News Network and the executive editor for Elsevier. He has written numerous scientific publications and frequently consult for the government agency in Canada and the United States. Jesse has 30 years of experience in creation and distribution of highly advanced software solutions that have been used in both the government and private sector globally. Uh, Professor Van serves on the chairman of the board of the directors, providing leadership and guidance for the firm's top executives. So that's going to be our speakers today. Uh, so I'm going to bring on Casey right now to get him started. Uh, again, guys, if, let me know if you guys have any questions. Hey, Casey, how are you doing? Hi there. Thanks for having me, Brandon. Perfect. So I got your presentation ready. So whenever you're ready to go. Okay. Well, this is the first time that I'm seeing this presentation. Just kidding. 
Um, <laughs> first of all, I'd like to thank everyone for their time tonight. It will definitely be worth the uh, the money that you paid to be uh, to be members of this uh, of this webcast tonight. Uh, you remember the commercial, uh, the most interesting man or woman in the world. After this presentation, you will be the most interesting man or woman in the world. Um, with what's happened in 2020, uh, everyone knows that something's been amiss, right? We had the, the uh, pandemic, we've had all this unrest around the world, uh, a lot of going on in the US, uh, but something's been amiss and everyone knows it. And somebody will say, hey, what, uh, what's really going on behind the scenes? Well, I'm gonna give you what's going on behind the scenes. I'm gonna open a window into the intelligence community, into the cyber community, into the national security community that just a uh, select few of us are, are at the tip of the spear. Now, I live a little bit south of some of our guests tonight, uh, some of our, our members tonight, uh, but we're all members of the free world. So my brothers and sisters in Canada, I know that there's folks in the UK on this call, Australia uh, and US, but uh, we're all members of the free world. A lot of my references are gonna be uh, United States references, but again, we are all members of the free world. So I don't care what side of the political spectrum you come on or come from, I'm speaking about being uh, patriots for our national uh, national security, patriots for our individual countries, members of the free world, and that we have a common enemy that I'm going to explain to you, it's really going on. No, my background is cybersecurity, I'm not a conspiracy theorist and so on, and in fact, you're gonna say, wow, we finally got somebody that'll tell us what's going on. So if you will, uh, please join me in uh, focusing on what's going on. So every company, university, organization, family, and individual in the free world is at war. It's called, the, the terminology, the textbook name is unrestricted hybrid warfare. Unrestricted means no rules. Your enemy, it follows no rules. And hybrid means simply that uh, achieving military objectives through non-military means. And uh, for people who understand this, the companies, the universities, the individuals who understand this, there's gonna be winners and there's definitely gonna be some losers against this. If I, I'd like to say that if you remember the history books with World War I, World War II, Cold War, Vietnam, Korea, our, our ancestors fought in those wars this is a war that you're fighting now, whether you understand it or not. And I'm gonna to explain to you exactly the war that you're in. They call it global competition. It's not, it's global warfare, unrestricted hybrid warfare. There's a gray zone. I'll explain what that is. And then the new global competitive environment. No, it's the new global warfare environment. So if you'll, uh, if you'll uh, humor me, uh, if you look at the gray zone, in the past, our ancestors and we have really only believed in peace and war, right? You're either at war with uniforms, guns, bombs, uh, ships, and aircraft, or you're not at war, period. It's, it's kinetic war or you're not at war, period. Well, our adversary works in everything short of war, which is called the gray zone. And that's where they do economic espionage, where they steal IP theft because our adversary, who I'll let you know is, and you pretty much have an idea, our adversary could never compete on the same level of the Americans, of the Canadians, the Brits, the Aussies, and so on, uh, by, by de developing their own intellectual property, their own economies, and so on, based on their own merits. So they have to do it through uh, e economic espionage and the, the incredible, amount of theft of IP. Um, also cyber warfare is how they, they disable or weaken their adversary as well as steal IP. And again, you have to understand it's under no rules. Real quick, this slide is from the MITRE Corporation. And we all know what the nuclear era was. It was Western domination, 1945 to 1990, so on and so forth. We know what that is. Conventional era was 1991 to 2015. So 25 years of globalization uh, and the consolidation of the industrial base, all that kind of stuff, right? Technology commoditization. And then the asymmetric era, you can also look at it. Asymmetric is also used with unrestricted kind of interchangeably. Unrestricted just means no rules. Asymmetric means they're coming at you from every angle. So the asymmetric angle, 
or the asymmetric era has been happening since uh, 2016. And there's really no deterrence. Before it was nuclear deterrence, and then it was technology or economic deterrence. Now there's no deterrence because of the theft of, of IP and basically using that IP against, uh, against their adversaries, which is you. Um, businesses are now carrying massive unknown operational risks uh, from these nation states, and, they're, and these nation states are attacking at scale. So when there's everybody's surprised by solar winds, those of us who've been at the tip of the spear, that's no surprise at all. That's that's absolutely just a tip of the iceberg of what's what's been going on, what's going under the surface, going on under the surface, and what will continue in the future. So my challenge is to you to get this message to all of your company executives and all of your company people and your families to understand this is really what's going on behind the scenes and from uh, from uh, infiltration and so on in your economies, in your countries, and uh, and on and on. So uh, the U.S. Attorney General uh, came out about a year ago saying the stakes could not be higher. It's the single most important event of the century. FBI Director Christopher Wray has been out for the last two years saying China is the most significant threat to the U.S. Just replace the U.S. with the free world. Our, our, our brothers and sisters in Canada, U.K., France, Germany, any free nation, democracy or democratic-based uh, country, is at war with the Chinese Communist Party and the evil axis of the other Chinese affiliates. The FBI says there's over a thousand open investigations. That's only about one or 2% of really the actual. So you're really looking at about 50,000 incidents, uh, but the FBI only gets involved, remember it's Federal Bureau of Investigation. They only really get involved after a crime has been committed. There are a lot of uh, infiltrations. There are a lot of thefts that either go unreported and worse, undetected. So uh, US Secretary of State, might as well be Canada, might as well be UK, Australia, any free nation. And I'll read it to you because it's that important. Today, we are finally realizing the degree with which uh, the Chinese Communist Party is truly hostile to the United States and our values and its worst deeds and words and how they impact us. China's ruling Ch Communist Party is focused on international domination and must be confronted. Um, that is absolutely significant. If you look at Pompeo and his quotes over the last two years, it is absolutely significant and the US has finally woken up and the free world has finally woken up to really what the threat is of the Chinese Communist Party. You have to understand, the free world, uh, our values and our friendliness is used against us by extremely nefarious and evil communist regimes, namely the Chinese Communist Party. I need to let you know, there's only one China and it is completely and utterly controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, the four, as you can tell, uh, the Chinese Communist Party, Russia, North Korea, they're all communist regimes in Iran, might as well be communist. Um, they're not, but they might as well be. But all four of those do war exercises, war gaming exercises. They share military technology and intelligence against the free world. Secretary, uh, former, uh, recent former Secretary of Defense, Mark Esper, we must wake up to the Chinese Communist regime. Beijing intends to be the preeminent, in other words, the only superpower, and I'll tell you why, and it's the Pentagon's top concern. You got to understand who the Chinese Communist Party is, and again, they are polar opposites to Western or uh, uh, the free world values. Remember, it's total communism with a bent on uh, uh, capitalism, to, to extract as much as they can out of capitalism as it supports the Chinese Communist Party. One thing to remember is the Chinese Communist Party has the PLA. Their army is the People's Liberation Army. That army is not charged with the people's constitution and, and defending the people's constitution. It is charged with keeping the Chinese Communist Party in power. That is all. It's founded in 1921, so they just celebrated their 100-year anniversary. 
They've been in power since 1949. They killed a total of 77 million Chinese during their big famine during the 60s and 70s, and it just goes on and on and on. They boast about killing Americans in Korea and Vietnam. They put out videos uh, about Hollywood videos or, or, or pirated Hollywood videos of bombing Air Force bases like it's being done current day. I mean, it just goes on and on. Control, oppor oppor uh, oppression, punishment, increased aggression. They call it stability. It's oppression. It's, there's no other word for it. Forced human organ transplants. That's murder. Forced human organ transplants is, is really, is only murder in our world. The forced internment and re-education of Muslims, which are called Uyghurs. There's over a million of those. Those are also forced into uh, plants to, to generate work for 15 hours a day, seven days a week. So it's a severe uh, surveillance state, uh, oppression, control, so on. In the US, they put in their, their infiltration and subversion are Confucius Institutes. At one time, recently, there were 105 at US universities and, and uh, uh, colleges. Confucius classrooms, at one point, at the peak two years ago, there were over 500 Confucius classrooms in US middle schools. That's only to infiltrate and subvert the United States and Canada, UK, and so on. And then the forced technology transfer and then banned encryption and so on. I mean, this is just one slide. There's another slide behind it. They, they, there's only one intent by the Chinese Communist Party is to just destroy the US and the free world through unrestricted hybrid warfare. To destroy and basically weaken just to walk on and take over. They have no intention of coexisting ever uh, Canada, US, UK, all want to coexist. The, the economy that was put forth after World War II was a global economy to where everyone wins. They view where we win in Canada, UK, the rest of us, we all believe in win or lose. If I lose to you this year in business or in my, in my football game, then I'm going to come back and get you next year. The clock resets January 1. Not so with the Chinese Communist Party. We must live, you must die, never to compete again. Again, no rules. They, they work under no rules. You're under Canada law, UK law, US law, Aussie law. We're not. Those are your laws. In fact, they use those, our law, own laws to handcuff us while they work in the, in the world of uh, 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 under the radar. They work under plausible deniability. Um, so unrestricted warfare, unrestricted hybrid warfare is the cumulative weakening. And I'll explain to you that a little bit later. Uh, the goal is complete takeover at some point sooner than later. If you really look what happened, you said something's afoot. Will somebody please tell me what's going on? Well, uh, the virus came out of Wuhan. The, uh, the Chinese Communist Party absolutely never reported how many, how many cremations that they did, how many were infected. In fact, they destroyed every bit of evidence that anybody in the free world would have shared with their brothers and sisters to limit the spread of the virus, but they did the exact opposite. In fact, worse than the exact opposite, they started creating communist narratives in the free world that the US must have created it, that the Australians or the Canadians must have created it, and so on, to completely throw uh, the blame somewhere else. Anyway, they plan in their 100 year anniversary of being in power, not when uh, the 100 year anniversary of when they launched in 1921, it just happened this year. The 100 year anniversary is the big time when they fully completely intend to, to rule the entire world at the expense of, of everyone else. And incidentally, I will tell you that the Chinese Communist Party and the Chinese that they've pumped through the Chinese community, that they believe that they are the superior race and all other races are inferior. So you can imagine what that means when they talk about total takeover. Uh, key quotes of the Chinese Communist Party so you can get inside their head. They believe in death by a thousand cuts, not just one single blow, just a cumulative weakening to where you finally die at a thousand cuts. A thousand grains of sand is their terminology for espionage. And water always finds its path down a mountain. And they believe that la they've ruled the world for 2000 years the last century when the Japanese came in and raped and pillaged and then they had to have the Americans come in and the allies come in and kick the Japanese out. 
then that's the century. They refer to that as the century of great humiliation. These are two careful quotes you need to remember. Be careful raising a baby tiger. One day he will eat you. And then the other point, two tigers cannot live on the same mountain. Then the other pieces are, if you're Chinese, doesn't matter if you lived in the United States or Canada uh, and you're three generations away from living in China, we own you. And then all information, technology, and data belongs to the Chinese Communist Party, whether it resides in Canada, the UK, the US, or in China. That is their belief, and that's what they profess, and that's how they do business. One key quote from the FBI director, basically, I, I won't read this to you, but he basically says, this is not an indictment of the Chinese people. It's only an, an indictment of the Chinese Communist Party. And if they're going to steal and not play by the rules, then we're going to prosecute. So it's not an indictment on the Chinese people, but just remember the Chinese Communist Party completely dictates the Chinese world, the Chinese nation state. Also to further get inside their head, you have to understand Sun Tzu. They still believe in Sun Tzu this day. This, this dude was, was around 25 years, 2,500 years ago, and he was extremely brilliant. I'll let you read these quotes. Every battle is won before it is fought. fought. The supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting, attain strategic superiority. To know your enemy, you must become your enemy. That's why they're all through Canadian colleges, companies, US colleges, companies, U, uh, UK, Australian. Pretend your ignorance and encourage your enemy's arrogance. The rest of the quotes are just supporting the ones in red. So here's their strategy. This is what you paid all the money to be on this webcast today. You are now the smartest man on the planet or woman. This is the strategy. It's, it's unrestricted warfare in the gray zone. Remember, everything's short of conventional warfare. Our militaries recently just came up to speed and said they call it competition. They call it great power competition. No, it's warfare. If your adversary is calling it warfare, and the Chinese Communist Party does, then by golly, it's warfare. So deal with it. And our, our, all of our militaries are just coming up to speed because they've been trained for the last 40, 30, 20 years on conventional warfare and deploying conventionally. Well, that's not what this is about. The gray zone is everything short of conventional war. And the Chinese Communist Party and the Russians are gonna believe that they've absolutely failed on the other 100 methods these are only the top 42. They're only on the total 100 methods of unrestricted hybrid warfare that they had to go to conventional warfare. For example, drug warfare. The Chinese Communist Party, China, ships uh, most of the Mexican drug cartels uh, precursor chemicals for crystal meth, for heroin, all that on containers, in container ships, to the Mexican ports and Michoacan and so on and so forth to use the brilliant uh, pipelines to the, through the US and Canada to destroy Americans and Canadians and eventually to the Europeans, our European brothers and sisters. So the Chinese, that's part of the gray zone. So, uh, and the modern battlefield being everywhere. That's just one example. Uh, most of the fentanyl that you see that's being uh, cut into heroin and other, other synthetic drugs is manufactured in Wuhan. Nice place. Uh, cyber warfare is a key accelerator to all other uh, uh, methods of unrestricted hybrid warfare. I mean, this goes on and on. Uh, religious warfare. They've outlawed Christianity in China. They've outlawed uh, uh, Muslims in China. Every other religion, unless it's the Chinese Communist Party. They're outlawing crosses, Christian crosses, outlawing churches uh, in the Chinese, in China. That's all done by the Chinese Communist Party because there's only one God to be worshiped and that is China. So you may, you may see some of that going on in your own countries. Just understand that this is being perpetrated by the Chinese Communist Party and uh, through finances and greed into your own countries. Uh, so a lot of our companies and some of some folks in our governments are looking the other way because they get cash and remuneration 
in exchange for access, in exchange for what uh, infiltration and so on. So that is absolutely happening. It's way beyond uh, new. It's been going on for a long time. If you want to know how long, 1986, month number three, is the Chinese Communist Party's nation state program 863, which I'll paraphrase. We're going to lie, cheat, and steal and completely dominate the free world. That's what program 863 was in uh, 1986. So these are all different methods that you're seeing. You know, uh, James came on and talked about quantum. Well, the Chinese Communist Party steals all their AI, their big data and quantum technology from the United States and, uh, and improves upon it to come back and to use it against the free world. So just remember, everything that the Chinese Communist Party, China, uses, manufactures, partners with, is used against you in a weaponization. The one thing I want to make sure you, you get, if there's one thing you get out of my presentation, this is all being done with no rules. Our countries all follow rules by law. These guys, uh-uh. So uh, John Demers, Assistant U.S. Attorney General for the National Security Division said, Years ago, he said the uh, Chinese Communist Party rob, replicate, and replaces, and then they redefine it. Kind of a consistent thread by all the top levels of our government. This is how to steal an airplane. Uh, this airplane is more American than apple pie and baseball. This is the Chinese Communist Party C919. It's equivalent to a Boeing 787 or 737, 800, 900. That aircraft is worth $100 million. So when they pirate an aircraft and they steal all the technology, and they're, first of all, there's no time to market when you steal IP. There's no cost when you steal IP. And your immediate time to market to produce this aircraft and compete on a world basis, you're taking a hundred, every time you sell 20, 30, 40 of these airplanes to Boeing customers or Airbus customers, you're weakening the United States, you're weakening the free world, you're weakening Europe, you're taking away the jobs, you're taking away national security uh, at $100 million a pop. Chinese PLA members, 54th Research Institute. It just in the 54th Research Institute, there are 160,000, quote, employees. They are PLA, members of the uh, People's Liberation Army, directed by the CCP. If the two guys on the left looked like they could be in any graduate school in Canada, the UK, or the US, or Australia, you're probably right. It just, uh, this, the uh, China Electronics Technology Group, which is the same as the Chinese 54th Research Institute, um, is 100% controlled by the CCP. Then you combine all these breaches, you say, what are the breaches for? When people ask me, Casey, should I be worried about a breach? I say, absolutely. A chunk of Canada has gone forever. A chunk of the UK, Germany, France, US, Australia is gone forever. It's not just sad. It's not just you know unfortunate. It's a reality, which means your children's future and your grandchildren's future is gone forever. So if you look at this, when you combine what they're all doing, they're keeping a file on every American, man, woman, and child, every man, woman, and child in the free world. By the way, there are, are over a dozen research institutes. This slide is from the FBI. These are the, the 11 different categories of China, China's or CCP strategic goals. Just remember, the CCP has a na nation state directive of civil and military fusion. Anything they partner on the civil side or steal IP wise on the civil side is immediately uh, diced up and uh, fused inside the military side as well. It's one and the same. Top 10 global companies. Looks pretty good, right? Canada, U I'm sorry, uh, UK, US, Japan, France, over the last, from 2004 to 2012, over $600 billion is stolen out of the US economy every year. That's just the raw innovation. When you apply revenue, profit, missing revenue, profit, and jobs each year, say for the next, in other words, you steal it this year, but that was meant to power each company for 10 years, then that 600 billion becomes 6 billion, 
which quickly becomes one third of the US GDP. So it, began, it becomes very serious when you're looking at stealing IP and research from US companies. And, and by the way, when it says US, remember, that includes our brothers and sisters in Canada, UK, France, and uh, Australia, and so on. So uh, the next slide, or the next image is gonna make you kind of sick. All based on stolen IP, economic espionage, partnering with China, Chinese students in universities. Get my message? That's why uh, this, these slides and this presentation is only meant for mature audiences. The top 10 global companies in 2019, the top 10 global companies, the global 2000, the top 10, half of them are Chinese Communist Party. Notice I don't say China, I say Chinese Communist Party. Uh, company, most innovative companies, innovative companies of 2020. Remember, a, a country that's based on stolen innovation and IP. These are ranked global mindshare, industry peer review, industry disruption, value creation. The top 25, Huawei. Stole, my friends in Canada, Huawei was built on complete stolen innovation by the most, the largest company in Canada, the largest employer employer in Canada been around since 1895, and that was Nortel. Completely destroyed in the matter of eight years from 2000 to 2008 and gone to bankruptcy. And the reverse mirror image was a company called Huawei. Now up 42 points to number six. And then you've got the other companies there as well. Uh, General Keith Alexander, this was 11 years ago. It's the greatest transfer of wealth in history. I'll, I'll let me help with that. Let me uh, change it just a little bit. It's the greatest theft in history. Uh, this is subversion and unrestricted warfare. If you want to look at this slide when this is published later on, uh, you, I would recommend you take this presentation uh, once it becomes available and it's got a link to it. Send it to your family, your friends, your executives in your company and uh, let them know that this is 100% accurate and 100% the truth. Remember the media in the United States, I can't speak of Canada and I can't speak to other free world medias, but I can speak to the United States. You won't see any of this in the United States. The top, the 90% of the media in the United States is operated by six companies and they are take, they have take money from the Chinese Communist Party. So you won't see this detail that I'm giving you today. You probably won't see me speaking on the top, uh, on the 90% of uh, the media in the United States because they, they are controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. If we, you want any more revenue from us, any more uh, gratis grants funding, you will not speak any ill of the Chinese Communist Party. People ask me, well, who should we be looking at? If we wanna get more to the truth, there are really, if you want me to just tell you who they are, the, the two, entities that speak the truth are the Epoch Times or Epic Times and the uh, and uh, Newsmax that are, they, they tell the truth and they're not subverted by the Chinese Communist Party. CCP organized technology. Anybody use Zoom, TikTok, Spotify for music? Any of your kids use this? Any of your family use this? Anybody have a Lenovo PC or server? Well, it's all weaponized technology. It's used, it's number one, used to, uh, for espionage to take everything on your laptop and, phone and send it back to the Chinese Communist Party to use US and free world technology to analyze big data with artificial intelligence and use it to weaken the country. So any Anytime you do business in the with the Chinese Communist Party or a company that does business with China, you are, you are reducing your children's and grandchildren's opportunity to compete in the future world. Because remember, your enemy does not use any rules. They don't abide by any rules. In fact, they handcuff everybody by those rules. So if you're using Zoom, get off of it. Demand that your partners, your company, your family use another platform. Because if you have the Zoom app loaded on your PC or on your phone, everything on your phone or your PC, I mean, photos, emails, passwords is going back to China. For, for what? For, for access to innovation 
access to intellectual property, access to blackmail you to get innovation, to get technology, and so on. So, uh, I mean, it just goes on and on. These are just the top applications, top hardware, network, TVs, appliances, and so on. Uh, people ask me, my advice, don't buy anything made in China and definitely no technology, including Apple uh, cords, Apple uh, charge cables, uh, Google, or uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Android charge cables and, and nothing technology related would I advise anyone to buy that's made in China. The US National Counterintelligence Intelligence AG, Agency came out two, uh, a year ago in February. Basically, US government instituted a paradigm shift to counter the threat. It requires a, an immediate whole of society approach that you guys saw in a previous slide from MITRE, including our allies. Uh, all security must be part of everyday American business and academic practices, and must be led by the private sector, which is business and academia. The second half of it is, uh, you've got, we've got to protect all of our free, nation, free uh, world's uh, critical infrastructure. More importantly, the supply chains, don't forget about your companies or your universities. Remember your supply chains. And uh, you just saw that with Solar Winds, a perfect example and uh, counter the exploitation to the US and the free world economy. Remember I told you, US, I mean every country, every free world country, and counter foreign intelligence, cyber, and technical operations that are harmful to uh, free world interest. Director of National Intelligence, just three months ago, China's threat to the, U to the US is a, def is a defining issue of our time. So something is afoot, absolutely, you're being aware of it. Key takeaways, this is an existential risk to every company, university, every, every individual in the free world and our democracies that support our free world values and our free world economies. Our adversaries follow no rules. Remember, live and die versus win or lose. They could not be more polar opposites than the free world, and they will never coexist with us. And the, the business and academic environments have permanently changed. Hybrid warfare is the new normal. So you are now absolute experts on unrestricted hybrid warfare, asymmetric warfare. This is a strategic change. This is a cultural change in your family, in your company, in your university, and your supply chain. What's your next step? It must be viewed and managed, managed from the adversary's perspective. You know. Even on this call that was opened up today, tell us about cybersecurity. Well, it's all about what we're seeing from our side. Nobody really understands and, and really projects from the adversary side. We can never properly understand or defend ourselves properly if we don't understand it from the adversary's perspective. This presentation gives you the adversary's perspective, including the money slide which with their strategy. It requires extreme ownership pervasive education and training and vigilance on your part with this part with this uh, presentation to be absolutely uh, 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 core to the education. So I recommend again, get this out to everybody that you possibly can. What that also means in your companies and universities and your supply chain, risk, strategy, the human element, technology and security must be unified on a, in a single platform in your company. We're going to win. This is a war that we will win. We'll win it through un through our own unity, uh, through each one of our, our uh, alliances that we have by out innovating China and the Chinese Communist Party and, there and therefore protecting that innovation against them stealing it and undermining and weakening our economies and our free world. So uh, next piece, people say, where can I go for more information? If you are still needing information after this presentation, then I would recommend we do the we connect the dots. I don't know of anybody else who does. Go to go to LinkedIn, go to our company page, and hit follow us. And just page through the first couple of pages, and you will become instantly ill uh, because we connect the dots. When you say this isn't real, because I remember when I first started this ten years ago or so, I'm like, no, they're not doing this. They can't be doing this. No, they're not doing this. Then after a couple of months, I'm like, wow, they're actually doing this. So the rest of us that are at the tip of the spear, 
and see this all day, every day, seven days a week, 365, it is absolutely happening. If you want further information, go to our website, Black Ops Partners. There's also an article that, uh, that I helped write for, uh, for the Army Cyber Institute. There's also a 12 minute TED talk that's out there as well. That's it, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. What kind of questions do we have, please? And again, thank you for your time. Consider me your brother on the front lines in this unrestricted warfare. So over to you, please uh, hit me some, with some questions. Hey Casey, wow, what a great presentation. A lot of great information. Uh, I haven't any questions yet in the form yet, but my question to you is, I mean, you've provided a lot of great detail on the threat that's out there right now. What are, what are a couple of things as an organization we should be looking at? So I know you said remove zoom kind of the, you know, the video conferencing, what are some things as if we're an organization watching this right now, what should I go back tomorrow morning and start implementing or looking at? Well, once this video, I mean, I, I just provided the audience uh, a tremendous amount of IP, a tremendous amount of research, uh, a central point to, to be grounded. So I would use this presentation as, uh, uh, as a foundation in your companies, in your supply chain, and your families, and your friends. This is really what's going on behind the scenes. This is something that is afoot that you're saying, would somebody just explain this stuff to me with, that doesn't have a dog in the fight and that's not compromised in some way? Um, so this is number one. Remember, it, it is educating yourself, which this presentation educates you. Mm -hmm. um, it opens your mind to seeing what else is out there. And as new information comes in, you say, okay, it makes sense. I see drug warfare, for re drug warfare religion warfare, and so on and so forth. So remember, it's, it's active vigilance and education. And that's the first part of all this is to be covered. And then secondly, scrub organizations with these apps that I just pointed out to you. There's plenty of other apps. There's there's more apps. There's in one group, there's 54 Chinese Communist Party apps. These were just the top apps that, that are pervasive through companies and families and teenagers and college students and so on. Just understand that your phones, your your behaviors, uh, both from a company standpoint, an employee standpoint, and an individual, that's all information, that's all data that's weaponized and used against you uh, by, by your adversary, by your enemy. So the, the number one thing I, can, I can't emphasize enough is education, education, education. Three years ago, like I was, people would say, well, this, this guy's crying wolf, this guy's crying wolf. Now people are calling saying, help us kill the wolf. Please help right. us kill the wolf. So there's no question that, you know, before it was like, ah, this is conspiracy theory. Well, after people have been through 2020 and and the, the coronavirus slash pandemic was only one piece of it, but we were home long enough a year to really start analyzing what's really going on in our world and then seeing other things like protests and elections and crazy stuff and and compromise and all that. The education will help open up everybody's eyes so we're all part of the same team in defending our intellectual property, our innovation, our countries, and our families. I hope that answered it, Brandon. Oh, for sure. Most definitely. Now, uh, one good question I've got is like, uh, what is the military's approach to cyber warfare and why hasn't that trickled down from what they're doing to the consumers that you know are using smartphones and things along that line? And, and we're, like you said, we're compromising ourselves, right? Yeah, we are. We absolutely are. And I have a very long background in cybersecurity, if you guys want to Google me or whatever. So uh, I've been in cybersecurity as long as anyone. This is not a, just a cybersecurity problem. I just gave you the overarching umbrella, this, the, the scene behind the scenes, the pic big picture behind the picture of cybersecurity. You can't understand cybersecurity until you understand unrestricted hybrid warfare, asymmetric warfare. And now that you do, because you've now, now you just got your master's degree from watching this presentation in unrestricted hybrid warfare, and you've been deputized, you now understand it. You know what to look for. Now somebody's connected the dots for you and so on. So that's, you know, that's really how to move forward with this thing. Um, and uh, did I answer the question uh, completely or do you want to ask another one? No, I think, I think that answers. I, I just think like, and I'll, I'll kind of 
articulate a little bit more. I think what's happening is the questions coming up is you gave a lot of great information, but now it's like, you've got all these devices, you've got these software, you've got these hardware, you've got all that. It's almost like, now what do I do? Like it's almost, it's overwhelming. It is, but remember the education, first of all, we've got to get your brain thinking along these lines of your enemy. You have mm -hmm. to think like your enemy as, and you know, you're not just walking around. Wow. Let's get onto Facebook. Wow. Well, you know, let me send an email to my company. Let me send an email to my friends. Let me, let me put some more music on Spotify. And I got a zoom coming up in an hour. Now, you know, you, you're you, before you've been looking from your own and respectfully, your own selfish viewpoint, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we've never been trained to think like the adversary. Now I've shown you, you've got to be thinking like the adversary. So, the, and I remember, I'll, I'll take you back to me 10 years ago. It took me probably three months to wake up and smell the coffee. And it did, it took me three months. If, I, if we can use this as the lightning rod to start lighting people up, lighten the audience up and make all this stuff go viral, then that starts the process because you're not, you know, you're, I know it's overwhelming, but if you don't, if you don't start educating yourself and you don't start working on this on a daily basis and softening up your brain from your selfish viewpoint and start thinking like your adversary, it's first of all, it doesn't happen overnight. It took me three months, two or three months to wake up. And I was focused on this every day. So, so I understand it's overwhelming. Don't be so hard on yourself. Start the process of educating yourself. Uh, looking at this presentation, maybe once a week until you until you lock it in, and like I promise you, every time you look at this presentation, or you show it to your family and watch it again, or your company, or hold it in a conference room, you're going to learn more. You're going to absorb more. At that point, you're going to be dangerous, and you're my point is good dangerous. You're going to be helpful to yourself, your company, your university, and your family. But trying to do everything at once now, starting tomorrow with Zoom and all that, just understand you now have the keys to the castle. You have the launch keys. You understand what's going on. I didn't have this 10 years ago. I didn't have all this information. I didn't have all this intellectual property and research. Um, and we advise governments around the world, just to let you know. We advise universities, private sector, and so on. So this is a culmination of, of cutting edge intelligence that, that we share that we don't, that that's our intelligence that we didn't get, we didn't, we didn't obtain from other sources. This is our own intelligence that is second to none and it's very solid. So from cyber warfare and military, these guys are just coming online. Three or four years ago, they just started their own cyber warfare groups or cyber groups. Remember, the military is coming from behind the peg on all this because they've been trained for decades in conventional warfare. Conventional warfare never included tech, uh, you know, high technology cyber, and now it does. Now, now they're talking about information warfare. They have information warfare as part of their cyber groups. So that's they're they're all coming up to speed. They're coming up to speed very quickly. But at the same time, remember, in the United States, I can't speak to Canada or or the the other free world countries. We're very siloed. In the United States, we have our, our military is siloed between the different branches, and what we do inside those branches is siloed. The, the private sector is siloed. Um, you know, the private sector doesn't want to report a breach because they don't want their stock price to go down, but they should report it. But can, can they? They should be reporting it in a general fashion so it can't be tied back to the specific company, but it needs to be tied back to the industry so we can all share that in the free world. So my point, the siloing effect is an issue with the military and an issue that we all have to fight. My point back to my audience is, don't forget the Chinese Communist Party, it's a straight line through China. They get what they want or they, they kill you or they get what they want or they put you in prison or they, or they re-educate you or they steal your organs or they punish your family. The big thing is punishing. So the point is always think about your adversary. They have a straight line to get what they want. Military, civil fusion. We have a bunch of silos. And you just saw in the US counterintelligence um, strategy, it says the private sector must lead the private sector. They basically said, hands off. We don't know the private sector. We don't understand the private sector. Only the private sector can fix the private sector. And the way I describe it, in the United States is the private sector are like freshwater fish and 
the US government is like saltwater fish. We're all fish, but we breathe different water. And it's a it's it's a different world. And it's very hard to transition between the two. And in the counterintelligence strategy that came out two a uh, year ago, uh, um, basically said private sector has got to take care of the private sector. We can't do it. So that's to answer your question, like in a 360, mm -hmm. is we got to get past all the silo stuff. And my my urgency is get past the silo stuff. We all have a common enemy now. Forget about left, right. Forget about political this, political that. Everybody's on the same page. We're all Canadians. We're all. Uh, Brits, we're all Aussies, we're all Americans, we're all French, we're all in the free world, and this is a threat to our existence. So we all have a common enemy. So let's get on the same page. Back to you, Brandon. Wow. Now, the, my last question, and I think because your your depth of cybersecurity knowledge, a lot of our cybersecurity and defense technology and software, it sometimes is developed overseas in China. So what's your thoughts about that? Like, I mean, if they've been weaponized, like you've got firewalls, unified threat management tools that are protecting the perimeter, how would we protect against that? Cease all China development immediately. Cease other uh, uh, pawns, you know, whatever, whether it's Taiwan or Hong Kong or somebody else who's acting as a proxy for development in China. You know, you have to under, we're at war. Think about, I mean, if you read about World War II, if you read about all that stuff and the espionage that goes on and to unseat, this is a war that nobody's familiar with, except our enemy is. And so the point is, I think I was pretty clear on those earlier slides. I don't mean to be uh, uh, disrespectful, but cease anything you're doing with China. Cease it immediately, both on the personal side with apps and, and buying products made in China, because all you're doing is accelerating your your grandchildren's uh, demise. That's all you're doing by doing business with companies that do business in China and and so on. So, um, so it, here's the point: you have to understand, Chinese citizens cannot access the global internet. What does that tell you? And Baidu is their search engine that's help, that Google is helping them develop it, to de develop. So the point is, if their people can't access the external internet, then why should we be working with China, blocking themselves off to the world? I'll just tell you, China wants to replace, they want to shut down the global internet. They're running their own GPS satellites. They want to shut down the global GPS satellites. I mean, just keep, if you want to look at those articles, they're all through our company page on LinkedIn. So you have to understand your enemy, they want to destroy you. So why are you doing business in China, period? By the way, if you're running XYZ American software in China, they or, or XYZ American consulting company in China, the Chinese Communist Party issued a law two years ago that said all data coming into China, the property of the Chinese Communist Party. So company A, it's using consulting company B in, and they're doing business in China, then all the data for company A and they're headquartered in Chicago, all the data that that consulting company has on company A becomes property of the Chinese Communist Party. That's all of your strategy, all of your finances, all of your IP, because you're doing business, 20% of your business is with a division in China. So, and remember, China has outlawed, so did Russia three and a half years ago, they outlawed VPNs. So if you're found with a VPN, you'll go to prison. And the reason for that is they have complete, they want complete transparency. One step further, for those of us in technology, everybody knows what source code is, right? Well, if you're mm -hmm. gonna, if you're an American software company and you're doing business in China, in order to do business after January 1st of 2019, you must surrender your source code to China, the Chinese. You must surrender your source code. Well, that's that's those are the nuclear launch codes. That's the keys to the castle. Source. It doesn't get any more beautiful than source code. So now they can totally control. What do you think they're doing? Epi, uh, complete espionage and weaponization of those applications. So all that, you know. The other thing is. In Canada, in the US, in all of our free world nations, so start bringing people into your governments 
that are wise to this to shut this down to shut this transparency or shut down this transparency this sharing for the for money by the way 60 percent of all chinese people live in poverty but china the ccp is making investments all around the world to do soft gains soft this and soft that but my point is to make all these soft political gains by the way notice ever since the, the uh, pandemic hit the coronavirus came out of wuhan and they destroyed all the evidence so nobody could so, so nobody could do the forensics on it to understand really the true roots and let alone try to help other people to limit the damage from the coronavirus notice how aggressive china the ccp has become over the past 12 months with uh the south china sea with india with australia with fishing all around the global fishing all around the world uh outside of peru the galapagos and so on just look just read how aggressive the chinese communist party has been over the last 12 months once the virus uh was released or accidentally released or whatever your term is and so on so um great For question sure. now Brandon. casey what else we yeah we were yeah we're coming up actually actually your time What's the best way to get a hold of you, Casey? If anyone has any questions or wants to follow up with you, go to our website, blackopspartners.com, and there's a form there that you can use to, to contact me. Right. And then you guys can yep. uh, find Casey on LinkedIn. Like you said, there's a lot of articles that he has, a lot of great information. Make sure you go right now. I mean, immediately, you guys have another browser, open up LinkedIn. Go check out Casey, get a lot of this great information, really educate yourself about what's going on in the industry. Casey, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This was great. Thank you for having me, folks. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Take care, folks. Wow, James, what do you think? It's an amazing presentation, covered a lot of information, didn't get quite all the questions covered but an absolutely outstanding uh, presentation overall. Well, I think, you know, when you look at it right now, I think a lot of people and, and common in the, in the actual you know, questions in the comments section, I think a lot of people are now looking at their environments from what I was seeing the questions, like, what do I do with my organization? What do I do with my company? You know, what am I supposed to be looking at? Like why I got, you know, you know, users that are connected to my network. So I think now like, you know, Casey's presentation made people really open their eyes and start to think. Well, outside of that, I mean, between solar winds and all the other hacks that are currently going on, the universities in Canada, uh, various corporations, ransomware. I mean, it's time that we start opening our eyes and realizing we need to do something about this. And not only us, the government of our nations need to start creating laws so borders will no longer protect cyber hackers or cyber intrusions or whatever you want to call it and really putting an end to this but you know the world really needs to unite in order to make that happen for sure and i think our next presenter jesse is actually going to be talking about more secure ways of communicating eliminating zoom kind of giving us more communication better ways of encrypted communication what do you think james I, I think Toria is uh, really going to become the future leader in communications for secure, uh, secure, secure communications. Uh, it's a Canadian-based company based here in Waterloo, Ontario. Uh, they have some great scope, and I'm really looking forward to Jesse's presentation. Yeah, same here. And uh, just want to say, uh, just on our, our intermission here, Happy International Women's Day for all you women that are in cybersecurity. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Keep up the great work. There's a lot of stuff going online about supporting women in cybersecurity. You guys are doing an amazing job. Love to be in the trenches with you guys. So, yeah, let's get Je Jesse on and let's get the next presentation going. Hey, Jesse, how's it going? Hello, everybody. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, thank you, James, for bringing me to this uh very, very high profile presentation here. Awesome. So you ready to get started? I am absolutely ready. Perfect. All right, guys. It was great to see the previous presentation uh, from Casey, uh, because there are certain topics that I'm going to present 
that if he had not prepared you for my presentation, you would not believe it. So that's uh, why I really enjoyed that presentation. I knew all about it, but I never had somebody to come with his caliber to come and tell other people that this is actually happening. So what I'm going to present, consequences of attacks, and then or data leakage, and uh, people are leaking data uh, like a sieve. So you're not protecting the data. How you protect that? What are the solutions? What are the problems? We're going to talk also about a quantum computer, uh, the quantum computer attack, why the solutions today will not be very resilient uh, very shortly. People are saying 10 years. I have here research that indicates 12 months. When I was a kid, I used to watch the show Law and Order. Well, not so kid, but a little younger. And, and it, it, other police shows. And it was impossible for somebody to invade other people's privacy. And we know that because uh, you, you need a judge to issue a court order for somebody to access your data. Letters cannot be opened. I remember the olden days where there was a strict monopoly for telephones. Canada and the US. Somebody from AT&T or Bell Canada could not come to the public and say, I'm listening to your conversation. I do not like what you're saying. I'm going to, you will not be able to uh, use your phone. And today, why am I saying this? Because today, every single large tech corporation thinks it's their right to come and invade your privacy and without court orders, do things with your data. They can sell, they can spy on you, and that seems to be okay. So we need to fight that. And this is also why the previous presentation were raising all the issues. It's very easy for people to go and get your information. And you may think, I have nothing to hide. I have hit this phrase too many times. It's not that you have something to hide. If you don't have nothing to hide, why don't you give me your bank account and your, uh, your PIN number? I would love to get it. So what are the consequences of these attacks? The attacks, it's not just there is an attack they stole information from us. Yes, everything that the previous presentation displayed, it's all true. But what we're seeing here is what is your consequence? What is what's going to happen to you as a cybersecurity expert that is in a company that was attacked? So that's what we are seeing here. First of all, oh, people describe solar wind. Nobody even knows what is the cost yet. We know for sure that 400 of the Fortune 500 companies in the United States. They were penetrated big time. And the entirety of the federal government, and you may think, oh, it was that department. It was the White House, it was the Department of Justice, it was the FBI, it was the, the Treasury. Everywhere was attacked. And then oh, we have Microsoft going to the Senate last week, and what they say? Well, these problems is because people are not using cloud. They wanted to go to the Senate to advertise their cloud system. And lo and behold, just the following day, the Microsoft Exchange attack found out the Chinese have penetrated Microsoft and penetrated everybody using Microsoft Exchange. That's so good to come and say, oh, you should be using the cloud system. They cannot penetrate us. Previous presentation shows how, how what is the problem here? Problem is everybody's leaking 
enough information that it can be used to social engineer attacks. People are saying, oh, they use this, you see movies, they using all these fancy attacks, and it's, that doesn't happen anymore. The attacks are all social engineer, and they penetrate the companies with weak communication tools. So these other ones are uh, just to show values of attacks. Sony, just Sony, lost $2 billion. And I'm not talking what the previous presentation talked about. It will be numbers, what he talked about. I'm talking about actual checks that were written to pay the expenses. So this is not talking also about the value on the stock exchange that this company lost was 10 times higher than this. The consequence for you that are involved in cybersecurity, they are severe. Ransomware that you have to deal with, companies have to pay, you are going to respond for that. Reputation damage for the company and for you as a professional, it's damaging. I have read a lot of people lost their career because of an attack like that. If you are a director and not directly involved on in the day-to-day -day operation, but you are a C-suite director, you will no longer be hunted by headhunters because they know you are persona non grata. Nobody will want you. It will cost millions of dollars. Maybe you have a smaller company that so will be on the hundreds of thousands of dollars, the attacks. And the lawsuits, because if you release data, there will be lawsuits. You will do your day job, and you also have to work at night just preparing for the lawsuits that will come. And there are way more. But no, I don't want to talk only about those things. And then um, maybe not all of you understand what the encryption keys are. I, we have a variety of uh, people attending. Too simple for some of you, but just I'll go quick on this one. The encryption key is something like uh, you have a zip file and you encrypt that. That password that you have is the encryption decryption key. So why am I saying this? Because only you or somebody that you're talking to should have access to it. Yet, when you're dealing with Google, Microsoft, and Zoom, just to name these three big ones, they're the ones holding your key. They can see everything you're doing. And now one attack that the Chinese did on Microsoft, who knows what they saw, right? I will address Zoom, Microsoft, and Dropbox just as examples coming uh, shortly. So nobody should have access to your keys. Why is this important? Because if there is an, an attack, as it happened at Microsoft just past week, then if your things are all encrypted, they won't be able to do anything with it. And I'm going to talk about RSA in a minute, because RSA is about to be broken. It's either broken or about to be broken. Some of you do not know what is RSA. One of the weakest moments when you are transferring files or access your bank account is your computer, your laptop, your phone connecting to the bank. The devices in the bank server needs to exchange keys. And these keys and it takes a while to go because it's called a public key distribution. So you need to exchange and RSA is the basis for most of it. If that is broken, then it's when uh, major things will happen because then there is no holding back these attacks. So we must use quantum resistant keys. We will talk about them in a minute. So the lay data leaks for these social engineer, engineering attacks, which are the most that we have today, are these social engineer attacks. They come from emails. We will see how weak it is. It comes from messaging. 
I saw on the graph that Case Fleming just showed in the cyber warfare presentation previously to mine, and he showed attacks with certain flags. I will not describe the country, but I was talking with the one that was attacked, and it was uh, our, air, our aerospace industry. It was not in the United States. And they were using messaging for secrets. Messaging for here's your ID and password. And the messaging system is broken. You may think, oh no, I know that they are end to end encrypted. That's a joke. People are using end to end encrypted to say, from your device to the other one, it will be encrypted. But the suppliers hold the encryption keys. It's a lie when they say it's end-to-end -end encrypted because end-to-end -end, end -to -end encrypted just meant in the past there was a no knowledge that the vendor had no access to your keys. They do. WhatsApp, say they're end-to-end -end encrypted. Telegram, we hired one of the largest cybersecurity companies in the world, the NCC Group, to come and attack our system right inside our firewall. So they came. Uh, they're based in the UK. They came here, stayed a week. First thing they told us, go tell your developers that we broke first time Telegram, that everybody thinks it's super secure. They broke it in 10 minutes the first time. Now they break it in seconds. So it is a urban myth that these uh, messaging systems, even the business ones like Slack, is end-to-end -end encrypted. Don't fall for that. And then cloud storage. I will talk about Dropbox as an example, but it's not just Dropbox when I talk about. This is a disaster. People are putting their secrets in the, in the cloud, and it's a disaster. You need to be careful when you do it, and there is a way to do it and be secure. File transfer. When you transfer files, if you do securely, you spend half an hour preparing the secure transfer of the files. Look at your banks when they need to send you information. Very difficult to do, and we'll show solutions for that. Now, this is a beauty. Video conferencing, Teams, Zoom, slew of other ones. This is leaking all your information. And you may think, I, I don't care about that. I have nothing to lose here. I have no secrets. But you give a piece of information here and there, and the AI will catch. I will show proofs to you that it will catch. It is not that have people listening to your calls. AI systems are listening to your calls. Emails. There are reports, and I have a, a list of links on the end of this presentation here. 90% of the cyber attacks launch via email. Email, you may not believe this, but email is as secure as getting your bank account and your PIN number put in a postcard, put a stamp, and don't put an envelope, and mail it. You wouldn't do that because you're not nuts. And yet, you're sending your secrets by email. This makes no sense. I got my lawyer sending me legal information by email. It's like, makes absolutely no sense. I'll show you what to do. Zoom. Well, the previous presenter already talked about Zoom. 90 plus percent of the staff and the development Zoom, not the salespeople. Salespeople are all in North America. They all have Anglo-Saxon names. There'll be Smiths and other ones, and the president of Zoom, uh, United States, it will be all, uh, well, that, that guy uh, lived here, but all the countries, they have the local one to talk for Zoom. 90 plus percent of the staff and the development and storage, etc., is done in China. The tape calls are saved in China. And then, Zoom already come. This says item number three. They already were caught three times going around saying we are end-to-end -end encrypted. I tell you this, and listen 
and see if it fits your shoe. It's the old saying, fool me once, shame on you. If you fool me twice, shame on me. I already knew you're going to fool me. You already did that. It's the third time they're saying it's end-to-end -end encrypted. They were caught the last time. There were two people in the United States talking about Tiananmen Square in the United States with paid account. I can understand somebody doing whatever, and I don't do these things in Twitter, but somebody may be saying stupid stuff in Twitter, none of my business, and Twitter goes down and cut the account, it's free. It's none of my business they cut, but this is a paid account, Zoom paid account, two individuals talking about Tiananmen Square, they cancel their account while they were talking. And when they were interviewed, somebody said, we had to do it because the Chinese government does not allow people talking about Tiananmen Square. And that moment, you realize two things. It is not end-to-end -end encrypted because they would never catch if it was end-to-end -end encrypted. Number two is, they have an AI system working real time, not getting taped conversations of real time, and finding out what people are talking about. Zoom was caught by Apple injecting spyware in the Apple computers. Apple had to issue a new updating the operating system to expel the spyware. When the previous presenter said, they are reading all your photos and sending all, all your information, all your emails, everything that's stored in your computer to China. Apple just proved that they, they were. So there is one further thing I was not going to comment, but since the presentation was all about this, the previous one, all the staff in China, they have the development, the planning, the storage, etc. Every management level doesn't have one person. It has an entire Chinese Communist Party committee there in the management level. So you're using Zoom every day, and then you say, what should I do? Well, I have seen a security, cyber security conference using Zoom. Now, you have to be a big hypocrite to be talking about cybersecurity and you'll be using Zoom. I'm sorry to say like that. We must walk the talk and then we're using Zoom. And then you say, okay, I use Teams, I'm safe. Microsoft is not Apple. Microsoft will release all your data with a simple court order. Edward Snowden and all the leaks revealed that the NSA and other government, uh, government agencies have full access to Microsoft. And that's not surprising. It's the only trillion dollar company freely operating China because they allow the Chinese government to have full access to all the information. So, and they are not end-to-end -end encrypted. They say it's all, they say end-to-end -end encrypted. They are not also HIPAA compliant. They are not a whole bunch of other compliant. And people say, oh, they're using hospital. They must be. You should see the list of things that basically makes it impossible to use Teams to make a HIPAA compliant, eliminate stuff. And you, you need to see it to believe it. Now, the cloud storage. My lawyer sends me stuff. And I say, email, I can't accept it if I'm reading what you're sending to me. So then they sent to Dropbox and sent me the link. It's in the license in Dropbox. They have the right to immediately scan. And they know, everybody knows, these big companies, they all know who contacts to whom. They have the right to scan and sell all your information. Let's say I have a proposal to submit to a, a big project. They can sell to the competitor and they will underbid you by a, 
almost nothing. And this has been happening in Asia, where large 50, multiple of those $50 million project, $10 million project, and so on. The winner was only $10,000 less than the second place. Funny enough, this happened over and over. Only $10,000 less. I will not accuse anybody of anything, but you are all smart people here. You know what's happening. So security solutions. Well, we must secure every single device. I saw a question saying, oh, I have Huawei. What should I do? Let me tell you this. We put a Huawei phone on a sandboxed uh, with a firewall just to see where the information was. We didn't touch that phone and it was being charged and allowed to go to the internet. And this Huawei phone was making on an average of 400 transmission of information to China per day, 400 per day, every single day. So you think you're safe? It's up to you. But now you have the information. Uh, it's very sad that people are not releasing that. So you must secure information. You have to have end-to-end -end encryption. This thing of having with no knowledge. Just saying, oh, mine is end-to-end -end encrypted. My WhatsApp my telegram my slack if it is text they're not end-to-end -end encrypted zoom was caught selling two billion dollars of taped conversation and it's up to you to decide if it was legally somebody tape wanted to tape that conversation okay it's up to you i will not create liability on me you're smart enough to decide $2 billion on taped conversations to Facebook. So it's not only in China, they sell around here as well. And Facebook is in all this. You must be the owner of the key. Cannot allow other people to hold the key. And it must be military grade encryption. What is military grade encryption? Why am I even mentioning? If it was for the general public, I wouldn't even use that word. But there are encryption, and there are other ways to encrypt it. And one of the things is this. The other ones that I already mentioned, if you send a message in Teams for the whole month, the encryption key is the same. So our system, every message you send, it's a different encryption key it's been generated in your computer nobody knows what it is and you must be changing the key all the time to avoid somebody grabbing this key who who can assure that the chinese attack at microsoft did not get the keys and now they have access to everything in addition to the american government now the chinese government is also seeing everything if they already didn't have that and then quantum resistant. We will see why in a minute. Tools must comply. Now, it's becoming too complex because there's a lot of lobbying in federal governments. It's not just the United States everywhere, such that nobody does restrict any operation from the big tech companies. So now countries and states and Provinces, they're all creating their own, their own regulations to protect the data. So there is no data residency. Uh, countries in Europe do not accept that data is stored in the, uh, in the United States. It's getting worse because if there is an American company, a lawsuit can force the company to release European data, even though the law that doesn't uh, so there's all this conflicting laws. These applications, they are not HIPAA compliant. So there are too many rules to follow. These are just a small example. GDPR is the big one in Europe. 
uh, and these are all people the, in the California and the HIPAA is for health. And it's a smorgasbord because nobody get if it has one standard for everybody, we will have to take control of this and summarize a standard. Already is that for people follow that was there are too many standards. It's it's not a standard. Now RSA is broken or about to be. Why say it's broken or about to be? There is something called Shor's algorithm. People make a big fuss about this algorithm, but if you are in the field, you know it is basically the Euler's algorithm. This was done by Euler's already in 1750s. 1750, if you didn't believe the number. And you can get a big prime number and discover where the two prime numbers that were multiplied to get the big number. And this is important when you're doing public key exchange. And the only thing that the Shor's algorithm is different from the Euler's one is when I'm doing the algorithm that Euler's, uh, Euler developed, it is done in a quantum computer. That's all the Shor's algorithm is. So not so sophisticated, but people think you need a computer uh, that has billions of qubits. For those that don't know quantum computers, it you have the qubit. And just a, a fun fact, you hear all the time it's because in the qubit, the zero and one is at the same time. That's not it. Once you make the measurements, either zero or one, there's the probability that there will be zero or one that we're talking about. And it's not all the things, in my opinion, not even the most important. It is the entanglement. It is one qubit, it could be one ion, and another ion that can be entangled. Once you start entangling, you multiply by two. For example, if I have two qubits, Entangle. I have then I add one more. I have two times more power. So two years ago, when Google came and said we have quantum supremacy, we can do calculations in our quantum computer faster than a regular computer by a factor of ten thousand. It's not the actual number, but I'm just saying what they said. And they were had a quantum computer with fifty four qubits. And one was not working, it was 53. Just by having one off from 54 to 53, computer was working at half of its capacity. So it's very powerful. So I, I saw this and immediately said, what is this picture? This is an optical quantum computer. I've been preaching that in, we need to move into optical quantum computers. People cannot do a lot of entanglement because even any vibration can disentangle and then the computers have no power anymore. And that's why you need millions of qubits because you're gonna operate them in separate and one of them will give the right answer. And you have to do this over and over to get a probabilistic answer. But light, the photon, we have the air here, it's not affecting it. So using a, an optical, quantum computer, this one that the Chinese said they have quantum supremacy, this one is already sufficient to break our essay. Just so you know, you're thinking, I'm reading, it says only in 2030, the I have, uh, I have the link here for the, sorry. So the digit cert had a research indicating that by 2022, next year, system must change. We try to push our authorial products in the military, and I went to we went to Israel, and they said we want quantum proof. They know something that nobody else knows, or the general public doesn't know. They will not accept anything but quantum proof encryption. Now, with quantum group, uh, this is a quantum 
an example of ion trap quantum computer. It's just so it's there. Today, there are quantum proof encryption. Symmetric is uh, we use on uh, Ontorium. And there's also for the key exchange, there are other things. But the, the best one is a Canadian solution from C. EW-S, you do CW-S.com, you will find more information, okay? They are the fastest and they are top-notch. Now, I'm very proud to say I do not teach encryption. It's not my field to teach in the university. But I'm proud to say that I'm I teach at the University of Waterloo and the National Institute of Standards and Technology is what defines standards in the United States. And they are being very smart because they are bringing all the standard institute to go into standardized encryption. They are quantum proof. Quantum proof or post quantum encryption, it's the same term. I like to use quantum proof because the general public can understand this better. So they have the third round already. It's almost, we're gonna do either one or three solutions that will be accepted. Two of the three solutions there are at the final to be either the three will be accepted or just one. Two of those three, they have colleagues of mine from the University of Waterloo. So the CRISTO and the NTRU. The NIST standard is not supposed to come out now. It's late 2022 or even later. In the, and I can tell you, you can start using it now, CW-S. I have no money. I have no shares from them. I'm doing here an honest indication that this is the best at the moment, the best one I know from them. Post-quantum encryption resistant to quantum computers, NIST standard, and here's the link for the CW System Canada. These are all the links for you to go and see it Secure in Chinese quantum computer, this slide will be available. You can be able to go and see uh, all, there are tons of uh, description, but you get lost in the fudge here. Uh, just as a closure here to the presentation, it's up to you to decide. Before you could claim that I wasn't aware that putting my company secret on Dropbox, I was actually making it public. I wasn't aware that I was using Huawei phone and sending my information, and I was putting my company at risk. If you're using Huawei phone with Toria, Toria will encrypt the messages. It will not have an opportunity to send that to China. If you are talking on your, your or sending message, Toria will do the message. It will do the video conference. All end-to-end -end encrypted. It will do the file storage. It encrypts in your computer. Servers will never encrypt anything. Because if you allow a server to encrypt, you're basically giving the right to the company holding the server to spy on you. And these companies, they live on selling information. So it's up to you to decide. So thank you. And I am opening for the questions. I understand that I did a little bit faster uh, than um, the, the 45 minutes. Hey, Jesse, that was actually a great presentation. Thank you so much. I think my head got stuck there. My, my video is not moving. I think you're, yeah, I think your video is a little frozen. Uh, you just want to come, come out and come back in. Guys, I actually do not hold my head still like that, okay? Hey, questions? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, first question is, what types of defense options software agencies are currently in place for monitoring major data transfers online uh, in the same way that money, goods, services are exchanged in excess? Look, there are a lot of tools and... Um, uh, monitoring as an example, for you to have a, an idea how brilliant, it's devious, but it's brilliant. 
the Russian attack using solar wind was. Solar wind is exactly the company to do that. One of the things they do is exactly what the question is. So they went and did a social engineer attack, got an, I, an account of somebody and penetrated the company. Now they are inside the company. They changed the software and put their, I'll call that a virus. It's a Trojan, but people understand the term as virus here. So they put the virus inside and then when the software on all these large corporations, they were updated, then it inserted the virus inside the computer. Now, it is exactly things like solar wind that was penetrated, fire eye was penetrated. There are other ones. Now, other things that the human should be doing is before you do the transfer of file, you should encrypt it yourself on your side. Don't allow the tool to do it because you do not know what is the corporation that is doing this is a supply. Perfect. Uh, I think the next question is, I'm just looking at here. Uh, so when you're talking about, I think they were they're referencing when you're looking at the different data solutions like Dropbox and, and so forth, which of those areas are we lacking the most? And I think it's when it comes to data protection. Uh, first of all, let me just preclude the answer with the following. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be the user's fault that the big tech companies are doing this against us. They mine our information and they sell it. And the tidbits of information that we have People can put together and identify us. So you may think I'm using VPN, then I'm safe. Or you can may, may think that I, I am use Onion Ring. Onion Ring, by the way, was developed by the US government. And you say, why would the US government develop Onion Ring? So don't feel that that's the final solution. The Tor browser, these are all developed by the US government because they can get tidbits of information and then assemble and get your whole information. So the situation is that if you want to use those tools, you're running a big risk because they will find a way to get all the tidbits and extract your information. So the way we do our business is you encrypt on your site. You don't even see the encryption. One of the connections that we have using Toria, a video conference, I send you a link, you click, and it's easier to use than any other video conference. And it's the most secure connection. Now for the messages, the same thing. For the file storage, you, we don't even ask you to encrypt. It is encrypted at your side. You transfer to our servers and it's stored. We have no way to open it. No quantum computer working. A thousand years we'll be able to crack. All the computers in the world working for the time of the universe will not be able to crack it. So there's no way to crack that encryption. And then it is done by you on your computer transparently. Now, what Microsoft, Facebook, and all these other companies do is, oh, we have security. But you have to go through the hoops to go in the settings and do this. And when you do anything, and then you must enter something and something else, and then you may be safe. And that's what they used to say, we are secure. We are not lying. But it is a misguiding you. It's a misguided way to fool you. Ours is transparent. It will encrypt, you don't have any work to say encrypt, deposit in the storage, it's done. Call somebody, it calls, encryption is all done. Nobody will be able to crack that encryption and you are all safe. We have no access to the keys, zero, none. Wow, that's, that's awesome. So now, Jesse, uh, what's the best way to get a hold of you if uh, people want some more information? Yes, you can do info at toria.com or you can email me it's uh, directly if you want it is j like for my name j jesse and then 
I know it's a bit complicated here. Jesse Van Griesven, uh, the English way to say it. Van Gr J Van Griesven at Toria.com. Okay. So best way is to, to email you. Uh, what about uh, No, I, I, I give you the option to email me, but the fastest and the more prompt way to get information would be infatorial.com because we have a team of people to answer. I will be on calls, other meetings, presentations, teaching classes. And then by the time I get to the email, I'll be next day or two days. I can't guarantee. So the easiest way would be infatorial.com. But I'm giving you my email because I trust everybody here. And you can email me and um, I'll, I'll get there and I'll answer your questions. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Jesse. Thank you, guys. And uh, I hope you uh, stay safe, not just with the COVID, but stay safe on the cybersecurity. It is just mind boggling that uh, everywhere we go, I deal with the Canadian federal, uh, the Canadian federal government. And I'm glad that I talked with other people dealing with that as well, because they wouldn't believe me. If I tell, told this and did not have these people that suffered through this as well, you talk with people in the government and they say, well, it's at the level of security is fine. And it's not. The level of security, they're using Zoom, they're using Zoom for classrooms. And then you get children looking at the class and all of a sudden, a main private part showing up, this is obnoxious. And uh, that would never happen with a webinar done using Poria, for example. And it, it is just uh, an abuse because people in the large corporations, they have been doing things that would not be allowed in the 70s. Could not open somebody's letter, could not cancel somebody's phone account because I don't trust you. So anyway, I wish that you stay safe, healthy-wise, and cyber-wise. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Jesse. Wow, James, two great presentations, a lot of uh, good information. I think uh, let's talk about the first one. I know it was very heated and political, you know, talking about the Chinese government and what they're doing to Canada. What were your thoughts on that? Well, I think my thoughts overall on that is really you know these cyber attacks are not just coming from one country they're coming from domestic international from communist countries it it's really hard to figure out and put your finger on just one but if we're looking for people that are being identified in the news and world news i mean china is one of several countries that are currently involved i think it is good to be aware and have this information uh, and we need to know how to defend ourselves in case of a cyber war and i think it's it's one of those things i mean you know casey's very passionate about you know what he talks about the history the information but again it's defense in depth right it's layers of security policies technology solutions that you're trying to implement and manage and it's not the one size fits all because you're not going to disconnect from every technology. You're not going to stop everything that you're doing now to be secure because it's, it's not feasible in the day and age that we live in. Right. Because how many, how many of our technologies are, are manufactured over overseas? Right. There are a lot. Uh, and I mean, not only that, we have technology that's even manufactured in Canada that come with parts from around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, if we're talking about removing a certain technology, that could be a costly mistake for a lot of Canadian companies and small businesses. So we really have to look at what those communications are. And this brings me back to another topic on drones, which we've covered in previous discussions. Mm -hmm. So we need to keep our options open, but we also need to know how to protect our families, our country, our assets and the people we love most about for sure. And I think that's where this is. It's all about education. Not like you said, picking on one, you know, culture environment saying they're the ones 
they're the guys. They're the people that are doing it. Because as we know, all you guys know in the cybersecurity industry, you know, you look at compromises coming from Russia. You look at coming from the Middle East. You look from, you know, coming overseas, the Philippines, India, you name it. Like, how many of us got these telemarketer calls from call centers from India, right? About CRA or IRS, whatever. So these compromises are coming from all over. And I think what happens is, is we have to be aware but again, you can't go into a fear state either. You can't go putting on your tinfoil hat and going up and up north and you know barricading yourself out in in, a, in the boonies. That now you're going to isolate yourself and you now you think you're going to be protected, right? So I think we have to have a balance of that, and that's why us doing this cybersecurity in depth is really talking about layers, the layer approach, education, knowledge, cybersecurity awareness, policies, procedures, technologies, and understanding like the whole depth of cybersecurity. Absolutely. So let's, let's talk about the last presentation. So mm -hmm. Toria, so my understanding, and I mean, Jesse covered a lot of information, but Toria is really kind of the end to end encryption business communication. That's really kind of the overview of that, that presentation is it's really that next level of end to end communication. So I think the way I look at it with Toria is, uh, besides being Canadian built technology, everyone starts from somewhere. And uh, mm -hmm. from what I've seen in Toria, and I've had the opportunity to get on their system, uh, Lisa, who was on our show, actually gave me a tutorial of their software. And what I liked about it is that the possibilities of this software can create an encrypted system for communications protecting my data. Now, I mean, that doesn't mean it's going to protect your computer from attack, but it will secure my data from being seen by people I do not want it to be seen by. So right. I've got to say that I definitely support the uh, Toria software, and I definitely think it's something we are looking forward to seeing develop as, as we move forward. But I can tell you that when I'm looking at different platforms between Teams and Blue Jeans and Zoom and so on, I have to tell you and be totally honest, and it's not about this show. I got to tell you, I actually enjoy the Toria platform. And I think when people start realizing what Toria is and what it is becoming, uh, people are going to be very pleased that there is something there that is out that is designed to protect data. Right. And we look at it as like video calls, messaging, scheduling, file sharing. And of course, there's a lot more. I mean, you guys can go on their website, Toria.com, uh, T-A-U-R-I-A.com. Check it out. You know, ask for a demo, ask to test it out. Uh, what I've seen and working with James is, yeah, it's the kind of the communication platform now that's looking at the next level of security. Right. Because I, as we know, when Zoom took that big launch and, you know, we went through the pandemic, so many people started to use Zoom, but then there wasn't this level of encryption. There was Zoom bombing and people jumping into Zoom meetings. This is to help prevent that and to help you know that next level of security, especially when now more companies and organizations are on video conferencing. Absolutely. And I think one of the other things that Jesse had brought up was about CW systems encryption. And that's mm -hmm. really new new level age technology, which is going to secure the industry. And with what I'm seeing around the world today, we need the encryption. We need to protect this data. And, you know, there are, what, 7 trillion people on this planet that will all have a different approach on how our lives will be run and managed, especially that with technology. We have to be now ready. Yeah. Now, if anyone's out like still online, let, let us know if you guys have any questions about today's two presentations or kind of, you know, anything that's going on in your world. I want to go back to CW and just kind of quickly talk about that. We, we, both you and I, we've had uh, Dave as well as Chad on, on one of our streams and be able to talk about their, their technology and what they're doing with everything that's going on in the industry right now with the new quantum computers coming out, them now being cost effective that people can really buy them like $5,000, I think was, you know, the base model is not that yeah. expensive, right? You're right. It's not that expensive. Uh, but really the, the risk, a lot of people are realizing that wired magazine created a publication about uh, China coming out with a new, 
uh, quantum computer that has two qubits. I, I can give everyone personal uh, assurance here that a two qubit computer is not enough to hack uh, computers utilizing today's encryption systems. We are a way off from there, but you know, we have to be prepared. Technology for the future is coming. Changes will happen, but we need to start updating our level of encryption just to start that process. Right. And I think that's the, the, the conversation when you're looking at confidentiality of information, data protection, things along that line, we all have to look at how we're protecting. I know you can get, go through classifications, right? You can look at storage and encryption, but is that encryption, like you're saying, is it now, is it enough? Or do you need to now go to that next level? And that's really kind of the conversation for 2021. What is that next level? What do I need to start looking at? And I think that's why the defense in depth conversation is we have now, you know, quantum resilience, quantum proof, you know, and I mean, I don't think there's any quantum proof yet encryption. I know there's, you know, quantum resilient. And the only reason why is because, you know, people haven't had the ability to test it against a quantum computer yet. And right? once they do, then they can prove out their, their process and their theory. But at least now it's at the level where a quantum computer will have an extremely hard time to break in. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And you're right. There is no real way to test it. Uh, however, in a quantum resilient world, we have to look at the mechanics that are actually behind that. And based on math mathematical skill, uh, an actual equation, it is easier to identify that through the equation to what the strength is. And when we're talking into the quadrillions of zeros, uh, into its actual strength, it will take us years before we get to that level. But according to some of the presentations in in both of our meetings, that could actually be a lot sooner than what I'm predicting. It could be as soon as two years from now. So it it's going to be interesting to see where the world will be two years from now. And think about this as an organization, even government, right, and military, they're slow moving when it comes to deploying deploying new technology. So they need to start looking at now doing proof of concept and testing how it works with their infrastructure. Start looking at it now. If not, I mean, they might be behind when they need it. And now it's, you know, too late. They've been compromised. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the military, I think, have probably one of the biggest engagements that they're going to need to look at. Uh, I mean, when we're talking about our defenses, now the world, everywhere we look in the news, we have drones this, drones that. Everything that has an electronic keyboard can be hacked. It, it gives you that warm, comfortable feeling to knowing that if we don't start making the changes, yes, we can have the best technology. But if we can't stop it from being hacked, where are we going to be? For sure. And I think we got a question by designed by Mallory. Uh, are we seeing uh, are we seeing the effects of identity theft and cyber attacks leading more people to create new identities? Is that even effective now? So I think she's saying like, you know, people are being compromised or potentially being compromised and then looking at creating new identities just to, you know, as a cybersecurity defense uh, measure. What do you think about that? Well, I think, I think Mallory is on, on a good point here. Uh, when we actually look down to these kind of attacks or trying to steal someone's ideas and creation, we let's look at healthcare. Healthcare is a fine example at the World Olympics. We have athletes' data constantly being hit by attacks, being taken, they're being modified. Uh, if there's any type of drug interaction, it's being removed from their files so they can compete. And this is an ongoing thing. And we actually know people inside uh, the medical field that are working with these organizations. So this is a common everyday occurrence. We have to be aware of what's going on and realizing that when we go out for a walk in the park, it's not just a beautiful day, which it probably is as long as it's not raining. But on the outside of the world, we live in digital space. Everything we do, anything we do, is being recorded. You walk in downtown Toronto, you tell me one place where you can walk 10 feet on public pavement without being recorded. And mm -hmm. I, I would just be totally shocked. 
So it is the digital age. Everything we do, everything we see in a community-based area is now being recorded. Where, where do we draw the line for protecting our privacy? But to answer Mallory's question, I think it's going to get a whole lot worse before it gets better. And again, the government needs to stand up and start creating legislation that will protect this from happening to people. So to answer, in my opinion, with Mallory's question, uh, changing your identity, you got to look at the attack. If someone wants to attack you and they're attacking your identity, they're trying to compromise your bank account, your social media, anything along, along that line, if you change or modify it in the sense of new name, new maybe new images, if they're after you, they'll come back after you again. Right? I was at, uh, I was in Ottawa in 2016 2015 uh, a conference there and they were talking this one young young woman came up and stated that she had to change her identity every three to four years because her pictures as when she was younger uh got posted on the dark web and now they just keep stalking her as she's growing up and they find out where she works they find out what she's doing like and it just keeps going and every couple of years she has to change her whole identity she has to move, change her identity, change her job, just because they keep harassing her. So, and we, you and I have been talking about this offline is there needs to be more, more increase in, you know, more in depth cybersecurity laws to catch these people and, and punish them for these criminal activities and make people feel safe in the digital world. You know, just recently, and I think it was only a couple of days in the news, uh, it was identified that hackers are now being hacked. Uh, I, I got to tell you, that would be the funniest thing to actually watch, realizing that, you know what, the hunters will now become the hunted. Uh, what, a, what a perfect analogy. But the thing is, they're going to become more creative and they're going to attack even harder. So, uh, again, when it comes down to identifications, everything is digital. Uh, if a person knows how to access a computer, they can get into your driver records, your financial records, uh, really what is safe. And, you know, if you're going to transfer data on online through the World Wide Web, you know what, coming back to Toria, utilizing their kind of technology for communications may be a very good start for it. But we are a far away from before the world will actually unite together in order to protect this kind of data. And we have to start somewhere. For sure. No doubt about it. So, I mean, we're, we're at nine o'clock uh, and Eastern standard time. Any, any final thoughts, James? Uh, you know, let's, let's just keep, keep our spirits alive. Let's, let's keep uh, enthused. You know what? Everything seems to be doom and gloom out there, especially with COVID. But we are a we are a very good people. We are trying to do our best in challenging environments. And I got to tell you that we will come out at the at the far end of this, and we will survive this. And there is a lot to do and a lot to say. And we are here to listen. We are here to help. And, uh, you know, thank you very much for the people that attended the show. And we're very proud to have you here. And, uh, Brandon, how about you? I think, uh, and I'll just answer Mallory quick. She asked a quick question. Do you think that, uh, th do you think this might create a trend of dual identities in future generations as a defense mechanism? I think if you look at the younger generation, uh, TikTok, uh, Snapchat, things along that, they just don't care at this point. Right. And they're creating identities on the social media. As soon as one account gets taken down, they create another one. Right. So that's our new generation coming up is they don't really care about security around identity until they get compromised. Now I've heard people that get compromised and do that. So it's a very interesting conversation. I think, you know, one of our topics, we'll probably talk about that in future about identity theft and get someone on here. That's an expert about it. I think that's a great topic about, you know, identity, uh, digital protection and kind of, you know, how to look at it in this day and age of, you know, digital privacy. Now, James, for us, I think, you know, I really appreciate every everyone coming out. 
sharing their insights, asking questions, showing kind of what they're dealing with in their day to day, you know, environments and really helping us to learn from them as much as we learn from the experts on, on the stream to be able to share with you. So all I recommend for you guys is make sure you share our group out to your colleagues, your family, your friends, get them to come out, check it out, ask lots of questions. That's what this is here for. It's really to get that cybersecurity awareness, the defense in depth in all areas of life, business, personal, military, government, you name it, so that you guys really know what's going on in the day-to-day -day cybersecurity threats and landscape so that you guys can take it back to your people, organization, friends, families, and then start to apply. I right, start to implement as soon as possible. Yeah, and we really like to cover the real information to the people that need it the most, and that's you. Exactly. So, guys, thank you so much. Make sure you subscribe to uh, the YouTube channel, the Meetup, wherever you are. Uh, let us know if you have any comments, any feedback that you have. Let us know, and we'll see you guys next month. Sounds great. Thank you very much, everyone. Be safe. Stay healthy.